Have you ever wondered about the obscure yet fearsome deities that lurk in the shadows of various mythologies? Mythology, a bewitching realm of ancient narratives and captivating characters, has always wielded a unique allure. This enchantment stems from its capability to resonate deeply with human emotions and experiences. Spanning diverse cultures and epochs, mankind has developed an immense pantheon of deities, each personifying distinct aspects of life, death, nature, or even abstract concepts. These mythological narratives have become, have become an integral part in understanding human psyche, offering us a window into our ancestors' wisdom and our shared fears, dreams, and aspirations. While some gods, gods are benevolent, granting blessings and prosperity, others cast an ominous shadow, inspiring both terror and reverence. Today, we're steering away from the familiar faces of mythology, such as Zeus and Thor. Instead, we're venturing into the hair-raising stories of lesser-known deities, the ones that may lack fame, but still play a remarkable role in the intricate tapestry of mythology. From the sun-drenched realms of Egypt, where the god of chaos, Seth, cultivates disorder, to the vibrant expanse of India, where we'll explore the tale of Kali, who symbolizes both destruction and death and motherly love. Each culture harbors its own fear-inducing gods, often representing chaos, obliteration, and inevitable doom. These under-celebrated deities, though not as renowned, fulfill vital roles within their respective mythologies. Their tales frequently impart moral lessons, lessons, epitomize cultural beliefs, and intersect with historical events. Each of these divine beings, in their unique and peculiar ways, mirror the intricate tapestry of human emotions and experiences. They personify the darker aspects of life, the fears and apprehensions that have haunted mankind since its inception. These gods exemplify the uncharted, the untamed and the unforeseeable, serving as reminders of the equilibrium between order and chaos, life and death, love and hatred. So, brace yourself as we set sail on this exhilarating odyssey through the maze of mythology, excavating stories of gods who, despite their intimidating nature, hold a captivating allure. From celestial beings who devour souls to those who revel in chaos and obliteration, these are narratives that have not only faced the test of time, but have fascinated and terrified generations. Fasten your seatbelts as we plunge into tales of these less celebrated deities, featuring the wasp-headed Ati and the lioness goddess Menhit. We begin our exploration with Set, the ancient Egyptian deity embodying chaos and turmoil. Said to be as fearsome as the wasp-headed Ahti, Set stands as a formidable figure in the complex pantheon of Egyptian mythology. Representing storms, warfare, and destructive forces, Set's role starkly opposes the harmony and balance so deeply cherished in the heart of ancient of ancient Egypt. Set's tale, however, is filled with instances of treachery and betrayal. His infamous act of brutally murdering and dismembering his brother, Osiris, in a fit of jealousy, continues to send shivers down the spine. This horrifying event sparked an intense war with his nephew, Horus, reinforcing the timeless, timeless struggle between order and chaos. Yet Set's character is not entirely in maliciousness. Behind his intimidating persona, Set is also revered as a powerful protector. He guards the sun, god Ra from the deadly serpent Apophis, during Ra's nightly voyage, voyage across the underworld. This duality in Set's character emphasizes the versatile roles gods can play, sometimes even contradictory ones. Set's story serves as a stark warning of the destructive potential of chaos, jealousy, and conflict. It stresses the importance, importance of maintaining balance and peace. The dichotomy in Set's character, both a protector and a harvester of chaos, is a common in mythology, illustrating the complex nature of divine entities. His intricate relationships with other gods, particularly Horus, highlight the unstable dynamics that often exist among divine beings. 
featuring judicial quarrels, physical brawls, and even a game of checkers with Horace. Seat's Horace, Seat's interactions are a testament to his turbulent nature. In other narratives, he is allied with the war goddess Anat, further symbolizing his volatile personality. Seat's tale is not merely a fragment of ancient mythology. It carries enduring teachings about the severe consequences of allowing chaos and envy. His story underscores the inherent contradictions within us, the ability to create both chaos and order, to embody both villainy and virtue. It's an enduring lesson about the delicate balance that must be maintained for harmony to prevail. We introduce you to Apophis, the great serpent of the underworld. Just as nefarious as the goddess Ahti, Apophis is notorious for his sinister role in ancient Egyptian folklore. Emerging from the chaos chasm, Apophis plays a crucial role as the enduring nemesis of Ra, the sun god. With the fading light of the day, Ra embarks on his journey through the underworld. Here, Apophis lies in wait, always ready to consume him. However, this act of consumption is more more than just a ploy to shroud the world in everlasting darkness and disrupt the cycle of life and death. It symbolically represents the perpetual friction between chaos and order, a disruptive move to upend the cosmic balance. This celestial conflict holds unparalleled importance in Egyptian mythology. With the breaking of each new day, Ra's victory over Apophis. This victory signifies the supremacy of order over chaos light prevailing over darkness, and life's steadfastness against the forces set to extinguish it. Yet Apophis, the embodiment of utter chaos, is never genuinely vanquished. He resurfaces incessantly, returning every dusk to challenge Ra once more. This underscores the theme of the perennial fight between good and evil. Apophis isn't merely a symbol of darkness. He represents the ongoing battle between enlightenment and ignorance a conflict intrinsic to the human condition. His part in this cosmic confrontation underscores the cyclical nature of time, the frequent resurgence of chaos, and the requirement for constant vigilance and resilience against such endless hardship. To sum up, Apophis personifies the never-ending struggle between light and darkness, introducing Amit, the dread-inspiring deity of the underworld, a pivotal entity in ancient Egyptian mythology. Also known as the Eater of the Dead, she is not just a harbinger of terror, but a representation of cosmic justice, holding a central position in the ancient Egyptians' belief of life after death. Visualize her, a terrifying vision indeed, a fusion of a crocodile's head, the front body of a lion, and the back body of a hippopotamus. Every element, element of her form signifies the most lethal traits of the natural world, highlighting her menacing role in the divine judicial process. This divine courtroom, under the administration of the god Osiris, is her haunt, where she lies in wait, prepared to pass judgment souls. In this place, a person's heart, emblematic of the life they led on earth, is set against the feather of Ma'at, the goddess of truth and order. This isn't ordinary judgment. Instead, it's a metaphysical assessment of one's morality and of their fate in the afterlife. If the scales were to tilt in favor of the heart, it would reveal a life tainted with malevolence, duplicity, and moral decay. It is at this moment that Amit leaps into action, consuming the sinful heart, thereby heart, thereby upholding Ma'at, the cosmic order. She cleanses the cosmos of the moral decay that the heart represents, denying the soul eternal life and sentencing it to oblivion. Therefore, Amit acts as a powerful deterrent against immoral conduct in life, as the dread of encountering her in the afterlife inspires ethical behavior. She personifies the concept that choices made in life have severe consequences in the afterlife, serving not only as a caution against against ethical violations, but also as a potent symbol of justice, destruction, and rebirth. By studying Amit, we delve deeper into ancient Egyptian faith 
and their sophisticated understanding of morality, repercussion, and life after death. Through Amit, the harsh implications of a heart burdened by sin. This comprehension steers us deeper into ancient Egyptian faith and their multifaceted comprehension of ethics, repercussions, and life after death. Let's delve into the intriguing tale of Shazmu, the executioner god and vintner of ancient Egyptian mythology. Shazmu is a unique character in the pantheon, defined by an unusual duality in his persona. This striking dichotomy is the hallmark of his existence, with two divergent facets. One is soothing and appealing, prominently associated with the enticing aroma and the delightful art of winemaking, symbolizing joy and celebrations. However, his other aspect is fierce and violent, transforming him into an awe-inspiring, awe-inspiring figure. As the divine winemaker, Shesmu's role extends to an alarming ritual in the afterlife. Imagine Shesmu, the executioner god and winemaker, crushing the unrighteous in an enormous wine press, their life essence flowing into urns to be offered as a daunting brew to the virtuous departed. This unsettling depiction underlines the harsh consequences of venturing into the realm of wickedness. In the broad spectrum of mythology, Shesmu's roles represent the balance of life's forces. Even with his frightening disposition, Shesmu was pivotal in upholding the ethical order. Order. As an executioner, he made certain that those who veered from the path of righteousness faced their deserved retribution, signifying the cycle cause and effect. Shesmu's identity encapsulates a deity who, in spite of his apparent contradictions, embodies the harmony in the universe. He presents a stark image of divine justice, underlining that our deeds will invariably get their appropriate reciprocation, whether as a splendid wine or a regrettable finale. Meet Sekhmet, the lioness goddess of destruction, one of the most formidable deities in the extensive pantheon of Egyptian gods. Her name rings with both reverence and terror. Sekhmet, characterized by a fearful lioness head, is not only a goddess of obliteration, but also a potent emblem of warfare. She embodies the ruthless violence of conflict, the fierce intensity of the sun, and the protective, protective rage of a lioness safeguarding her offspring. However, within this terrifying deity lies a captivating contradiction. Known as the Destroyer, Sekhmet also plays the role of a healer, this is not simply a dual character trait. Her supposed ability to cure the most lethal diseases was widely respected and called upon, an element that is as intriguing as it is alarming. Imagine a deity who can annihilate entire cities in her wrath, yet also holds the power to mitigate the most devastating diseases. This dual nature of her, of her character, her capacity for both decimation and healing, Provid is a glimpse into the complexity of ancient mythologies. It highlights the fundamental notion that creation and destruction are inseparable parts of the same entity, that life and death are tightly entwined, and that even the most menacing beings can potentially embody benevolence. In the form of Sekhmet, we witness not only the horrifying power, but also the capability for healing. Healing for Sekhmet is more than merely reversing damage. It is a process of metamorphosis, converting the devastation of disease into health and vitality. For her devotees, the healing offered by Sekhmet was as much about spiritual revival as physical recuperation. Hence, Sekhmet stands as a potent symbol symbol of the duality inherent in nature and the cosmos, reminding us that even amidst wreckage, there exists the potential for creation and restoration. Step into the ancient world of Sobek, known as the Crocodile God. This revered deity of ancient Egypt was once cloaked in both awe and terror due to his aggressive and perilous persona. A unique figure, Sobek bore the head of a crocodile, which stood as an unequivocal symbol of his fierce nature, an emblem that inflected both respect and avoidance. Like a thread entwined around a spool, Sobek's story was deeply deeply woven into the tapestry of the Nile River, 
a perennial testament to its fierce power and capriciousness. This link painted a visceral portrait of Sobek's untamed fury, as mercurial as the river's currents, and as petrifying as its concealed threats. And yet, the Av centuries witnessed Sobek's image undergoing a profound metamorphosis. This transformation was not an abrupt shift, but a gradual evolution that mirrored the changing beliefs and comprehension of the populace. Sobek, once thought to be an omen of danger and a symbol of terror, gradually began to be viewed a new lens. His association with the Nile, previously a mere reflection of his erratic fury, turned into a beacon of fertility and life. This shift in perception started to revamp Sobek's image. No longer was he the dreadful god to be shunned, but a shielding force to be invoked. Sobek evolved into the guardian of the Nile, a defender of the pharaoh and the citizens of Egypt, shielding them from the perils hidden in the river's depths. This metamorphosis from a symbol of dread to a guardian deity underscores the malleability of divine portrayals in ancient societies. Sobek's changing societal role reflected the fluctuating contours of culture and faith. The story of Sobek serves as a powerful indication that gods, akin to their worshippers, can evolve. They can transition from being symbols of fear to figures of protection, mirroring the evolving societal norms and values. Transformation stands as a testament that even the most feared deities can evolve into protectors, illuminating the flexible nature of divine identities. Embark on a voyage deep into Hindu mythology and meet Kali, the imposing goddess of destruction and time. As Shiva's partner, a primary deity in Hinduism, she stands as a pillar in the cosmic narrative. Kali's ferocity and violent demeanor embody the wrath of divine power and its unyielding justice, breaking away from the expected, nurturing, life-giving goddess archetype to reveal the dreadful facets of the divine feminine. Kaylee's most celebrated accomplishment comes from, from her clash with the demon Raktabija. This fear-provoking foe possessed an exceptional skill. Each drop of his blood that fell on the ground created a perfect duplicate of him. As the battle escalated, Kali, unwavering and resolute, managed to obliterate him. She drank his blood, preventing it from, from reaching the earth, and consumed his body alongside his numerous clones a testament to her ferocity and determination. Symbolism is deeply ingrained in Kali's depiction. She is often illustrated wearing a skirt of human arms, holding severed heeds, and either standing on or trampling Shiva. Each of these dark symbols bears deep meaning. The skirt of arms signifies the karmic chains of the mortal realm, while the severed heads represent liberation from the cycle of life and death. Her dominance over Shiva underscores the balance and interplay of the divine and feminine. In their entirety, these symbols represent the transitory nature of life, the inevitability of death, and the ultimate triumph of divine power over evil. Therefore, the story of Kali is more than just a tale. It paints a vibrant picture of the formidable power of the divine feminine and the profound wisdom woven into Hindu mythology. Journey with us to the depths of Duat, an underworld that shudders under an icy grip, teeming with formidable creatures. The ancient Egyptians envisioned Duat as an enigmatic entity, a realm shrouded in ambiguity and terror. This liminal space traverses the demarcation between the realm of the living and the netherworld of the deceased. But Duat is far from, from your typical twilight frontier, it embodies an everlasting dusk, a ghostly bridge that links mortality to afterlife, and it is anything but desolate. Duat thrives a profusion of demons, with each successor more horrifying than the last. They take the shape of our worst nightmares, their malign presence capable of freezing even the bravest heart. As twilight falls and the mortal world is stripped of daylight's comfort, the sun god, Ra, embarks on a perilous journey through the frosty stretches of Duat. This journey is far from a casual stroll. 
Ra must face and defeat these terrifying demons to ensure the triumphant return of the sun, marking a fresh dawn for the mortal world. These your average monsters that haunt your dreams. They are embodiments of chaos, chaos and lawlessness, opposing forces to Mahat, the ancient Egyptian personification of truth, balance, order, law, morality, and justice. Their malevolent mission is simple, hinder the sun god's journey and doom the world to an endless night. The demons of Duat Harbingers of Chaos, each armed with distinct skills to unleash destruction and sow dread. From the fire-spewing Apep to the metamorphic Amit, Duat's inhabitants are unyielding in their pursuit of disorder. In the ghostly pallor of Duat, we bear witness to an unending war against disorder and ruin. Our exploration through the tales of these fearsome, yet lesser-known deities, has been a journey like no other. We've traversed the dunes of ancient Egypt and delved into the mystical realms of Hindu mythology, each encounter holding a profound lesson. From Set, the Egyptian god of chaos, we've learned that chaos is not always a threat, but can act as the catalyst for change. Set's tale serves as a reminder that even in disorder, there lies an opportunity for transformation. Amit, the devourer of souls, instilled in us the universal fear of judgment after death, a fear that reverberates across cultures and epochs. Through her, we understand that accountability is a universal concept and a powerful motivator for ethical conduct. The terrifying visage of Kali, the Hindu goddess of destruction, belies her benevolent nature teaching us that fear can also foster respect and devotion. Kali's story is a living testament that appearances can often be misleading. Reflecting upon these tales, we're reminded of the invaluable lessons that even the terrifying entities of mythology can impart. These gods embody our human fears, enlighten us about our battles and instill hope, all while generating a deep respect for the potent forces of nature and the universe. They underscore that fear, although an emotion we usually shun can also pave the way for a deeper understanding of ourselves and the world we inhabit. As we bid adieu to this fascinating journey, stay tuned, because our expedition into the captivating depths of mythology is far from over. There are yet more enigmatic tales to be discovered, more profound wisdom to glean, and countless unique insights waiting for us in far-off worlds. So buckle up for the next exciting venture as we continue to unearth the endless wonders of mythology. Until then, keep exploring, keep learning, and let the power of these ancient stories continue to enlighten your path. Allow me to introduce the final deity of our exploration, Anubis, the jackal god of the underworld. Far from the frightful figure you might imagine, Anubis is an iconic figure in ancient Egyptian mythology, instantly identifiable by his unique, jackal-headed appearance. But his role goes far beyond his looks. Anubis is not a god of terror or devastation, but instead holds an essential duty in the spiritual journey following death. He presides over the mummification process, guaranteeing the bodies of the departed are aptly prepared for voyage into the afterlife. It is his solemn responsibility to steer these souls through the treacherous landscape of the underworld, a journey teeming with uncertainty and danger. However, this doesn't make him a figure to be feared. On the contrary, Anubis is revered as the protector of graves, a steadfast guardian ensuring the peaceful resting places of the deceased remain undisturbed. He brings tranquility and reassurance to those who have passed on from this life guiding them steadily through the enigma of the underworld. While Deeth and the Under world are commonly associated with Anubis, he is, in essence, a god of protection, guidance, and honor for the departed, teaching us that even in death, there can be serenity and order, a comforting thought against the fear and uncertainty that typically accompany our final journey. Today we introduce Mafdet, one of the earliest known deities from the rich tapestry of Egyptian mythology. Often represented as a lioness or a woman with the head of a lioness, 
Mafdet stands as a potent emblem of justice and protection. Interestingly, she is known for her defense against venomous creatures, reflecting the dangers of the ancient Egyptian environment. Adorned with a headdress made of scorpion tails or snakes, Mafdet's image serves as a powerful deterrent to these lethal threats. However, Mafdet's role of protection is far from being restricted to the physical world. She also maintains a firm presence in the spiritual and moral realms, serving as a tireless upholder of justice. Folklore narrates tales of Mafdet racing across the night sky, her razor-sharp claws beheading those who transgressed rules and posed a threat to the pharaoh. Mafdet was indeed a divine executioner, swift and uncompromising, making certain that justice was dispensed quickly and without leniency. But Mafdet was no terror for virtuous. For those who adhered to Ma'at, the ancient Egyptian principles of truth, balance, and order, Mafdet was a protector, her might acting as a bulwark against the disorder and peril of the world. Her resolute and safeguarding spirit made her a symbol of authority and divine justice in the ancient Egyptian civilization, a lighthouse of order in the wavering seas of the world. So, let's pay homage to Mafdet, the lioness goddess of justice and protection. She serves as a reminder that justice, while often being swift and uncompromising, also functions as a shield that safeguards us from the toxic threats of chaos and misconduct. Let us now shift our focus towards the intriguing tale of Babi, frequently referred to as the Bull of the Baboons. Babi, a deity from ancient Egypt, is known for his unique dual nature that blend the elements of fertility and violence into a potent entity. Traditionally portrayed as a baboon possessing an erect phallus, Babi is a symbol of virility and procreation, thereby making him a deity associated with fertility and sexual prowess. Ancient Egyptians would often invoke Babi for assistance in matters of love, birth, and rejuvenation, which establishes him as a significant figure in their everyday life. On the flip side, however, there is a darker aspect to Babi. His title, Bull of the Baboons, signifies strength and aggression. As Babi was believed to be the first creature ever to die, he was assigned an affiliation with the underworld. Here, he was dreaded for his unpredictable and potentially perilous nature. Legends depict Baby as having a voracious appetite, with tales of him consuming the entrails of the deceased, a stark contrast to his role as a fertility god. While his associations with fertility might lead one to believe he is a benign figure, his ferocious nature warns us to tread cautiously. His dual nature serves as a constant reminder of the divine's complex and multifaceted nature, encapsulating both the constructive and destructive aspects of existence. This duality makes Babi an enthralling deity in the pantheon of ancient Egyptian gods, representing a diverse spectrum of life and death, creation and destruction. Let me introduce you to Ahti, a relatively obscure yet fiercely compelling goddess from ancient Egypt. Ahti bears a unique dual form, often depicted as an amalgamation of a wasp and a hippopotamus. This bizarre blending of creatures is not just a whimsical choice, but it symbolizes the essence of Ahti's hostile nature. The wasp, known for its sharp sting and relentless pursuit, signifies the spiteful aspect of Ahti. On the other hand, the hippopotamus, a creature known for its territorial and volatile nature, reflects her inherent malevolence. This peculiar form is a visual metaphor that depicts Ahti's role in Egyptian mythology as the embodiment of spitefulness and malevolence. Even though Ahti might be obscure, her importance rests in her connection with aggressive creatures and her personification of hostile forces. Her unique form and associations serve as a testament to the diversity and intensity of divine forms in ancient cultures. Tele is a haunting reminder that the obscure can wield Tremengaus and terrifying power in the divine realm. As our journey dives deeper into the lesser known terrifying gods of ancient cultures, Akti stands as a powerful symbol of the fearsome and diverse incarnations divine entities can assume. Let us now venture into the realm of Satet, 
the goddess of dualities. Often portrayed as a woman donning the white crown of Upper Egypt and armed with a bow and arrows, Satet encompasses the contrasting aspects of fertility and warfare. Satet's divine status was heightened as the goddess of the annual flooding of the Nile, an elemental event that brought forth fertility to the land. This pivotal occurrence ensured the propagation of crops for the inhabitants of ancient Egypt. In this role, she emerged as a nurturing entity, a source of life and sustenance. But Satet was far from being a tranquil fertility deity. Her prowess as a seasoned huntress and a ruthless warrior was equally renowned, shielding the pharaoh and the southern borders of Egypt. Often depicted armed, her readiness to safeguard and her role as a warrior goddess were evident. The dichotomy of Satet's roles underlines the recurrent patterns of life in the bygone eras. The opposing elements of fertility and warfare, growth and protection, existence and conflict, are inseparably entwined. The flood of the Nile engendered life, but it also necessitated protection and defense. Satet's is a resounding depiction of this duality. It serves as a testament to the intricate and multidimensional nature of divine beings in ancient civilizations. Satet's embodiment of both fertility and warfare reflects the dual nature of the Nile's flood, bringing both life and the need for defense. We delve deeper into the mysteries of lesser-known formidable gods. Satet stands as a stark reminder that the gods who foster life may also be the harbingers of conflict and that the cyclical nature of existence is inescapable, even in divine realms. Journey with us from the fertile banks of the Nile, where Satet reigned, to the heart of the battlefield, reverberating with the roars of a formidable lioness. Welcome to the realm of Menhit, the lion-headed goddess of war. Menhit, a name that translates to she who slaughters, was symbolized as a lioness, a true testament to her fierce and destructive power. Her lioness head, was not just a symbol of her ferocity, but it also represented her role as a protector. As a goddess of war, she embodied both menace and safety, striking terror in the hearts of opponents while providing protection to those she favored. Menhit was not just a formidable warrior, but her wrath was also similar to the raw power of a lioness safeguarding her cubs. Interestingly, Menhit was associated with other war deities such as Menthu, the bull god of war, and Anhur, the lion-headed god of war. This connection further highlights her status as a fearsome deity, with her name becoming synonymous with war and destruction. The divine embodiment of ferocity and protection, Menhit showcases the terrifying power of a lioness in the battlefield. Her saga serves as a poignant reminder of the complex duality of gods who are both protectors and predators. In the realm of divinity, as in nature, the line between protector and predator is often blurred, reflecting the intriguing complexity of these lesser-known, terrifying gods. Let us journey from the battleground of the lion-headed goddess Menhit and open the gates to a new divine territory. We are now entering the dominion of Mahis, a formidable deity known for his command over war, weather, fertility, and vengeance. The intriguing figure of Mahes, represented as a lion-headed man brandishing a knife or sword, dwells in the intricate corridors of the Egyptian pantheon. His lion-like visage echoes that of Menhit, underlining his ferocity and symbolizing his battle prowess and protective nature. Yet Mahes isn't solely a war god. His powers extend to controlling weather phenomena and fertility and he is also a dispenser of revenge. His connection with weather, specifically storms, underscores his destructive capabilities. In ancient times, storms were considered manifestations of divine anger, unpredictable, devastating, and awe-inspiring. In Mayahis, we witness this wrath embodied, a deity inextricably linked with nature's primal forces. As a fertility god, Appeals to Mayahes were made for blessings of growth and prosperity, revealing a more aspect of this otherwise formidable god. His role as an avenger, however, truly underlines his frightening power. In the ancient world, 
Vengeance was considered a divine right, a form of celestial justice for those who broke the sacred order. As the god of revenge, Mahis personifies this divine punishment, becoming a fearsome entity that delivers retribution to those audacious enough to break divine laws. In Mahes, we observe the duality of divinity, a protector and a destroyer, a life giver and a harbinger of doom. His story paints a vivid picture of the intimidating power of divinity, reminding us of the awe-inducing strength of these lesser-known but terrifying gods. Transitioning from the fury of Mahis, we journey into the barren wilderness to encounter our next lesser-known deity of terror. Let's welcome Pakhet, the desert's huntress. Pakhet, often represented as a lioness or a caracal, is a localized goddess identified with hunting, desert storms, and prowling after dusk. Her name, which translates to she who scratches, manifests her aggressive and predatory disposition. Was believed that Pocket wandered the desert under the shroud of darkness, her piercing claws and acutisite marking her as a formidable predator. Her connection with desert storms amplifies her daunting persona, injecting a layer of unpredictability and untamed might to her identity. Though a localized deity, Pocket demanded respect and veneration. Her capability to shield against perils in the wilderness made her a companion for those brave enough to venture into the desert. In addition, she was occasionally called upon for aid in hunting. Her predatory skill coveted to guarantee a triumphant hunt. Paquette, the huntress of the desert, personifies the harsh and relentless reality of the wilderness and serves as a stark caveat of the dangers that hide in the night's gloom. You venturing away from the arid desert and delving deep into the abyss of the underworld, we are met with a figure shrouded in fear and horror. Let us introduce you to Am He, often referred to as the Devourer of Millions. A rather obscure deity in the pantheon of Egyptian deities, Am He is described as having the head of a ferocious hunting dog, a symbol of his predatory traits. His residence, a fiery abyss, only amplifies his unsettling presence. What unforgiving duty does he carry out? The consumption of the spirits of those who have committed wrongdoing and deemed unworthy in the afterlife, sentencing them to an everlasting torment. This horrifying responsibility portrays him as an embodiment of sheer terror, a punishment worse than death itself for those who deviate from the path of virtue. Interestingly, only Atum, considered the progenitor of all gods, possesses the ability to rein in Amhe's terrifying might. This hierarchy of power serves to emphasize Amhe's status as an entity that most other deities cannot control, fostering a sense of awe, respect for him. Amhe, the devourer of millions, stands as a stark warning of the repercussions of evil and immoral actions, a bone-chilling representation of the eternal retribution that awaits those who stumble on their journey of righteousness. Having journeyed through the realms of the unknown and having acquainted ourselves with some of the most terrifying deities, we hope you enjoyed our exploration into the world of lesser known terrifying gods. Their stories, though chilling, remind us of the diverse ways in which cultures have sought to understand and explain the mysteries of life, death, and the cosmos. If you found this journey into the world of mythology intriguing, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your engagement fuels our quest for knowledge and helps us delve deeper into these fascinating tales. Share with us in the comments below which of these gods you found most terrifying or intriguing, and if there's another lesser-known deity you'd like us to explore. Your support helps us create more content like this, bringing to light the obscure and the extraordinary, the terrifying and the awe-inspiring, from the vast world of mythology. Stay tuned for our next expedition into the unknown as we continue to uncover the hidden layers of history. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and remember, there is always more than meets the eye in the world of mythology. The terrifying gods we've explored today are but a fraction of the countless deities that our ancestors revered and feared. So, as you delve into the stories of ancient civilizations, Remember the words of the philosopher Socrates, I know that I am intelligent, 
because I know that I know nothing.